Hey, I'm Kayla, and I'm here to talk to you about the new Windows Terminal. So the Windows Terminal is the new command line experience on Windows. So if you're used to the command line, you use it all the time, this is the new experience for you. So if you're an IT pro and you have multiple environments that you manage, you can do that all within the terminal, all within one window. If you're a developer and you build and test all of your code inside a terminal, you can do that in our new Windows Terminal. And if you're from a Mac or Linux background, if you're not used to what the Windows command line feels like, you can customize the terminal to have all of your custom key bindings as well as a bash shell so you can still feel at home on Windows. So with that, let's jump right into my laptop and talk about what's new with the command line. So I'll just type term and get the terminal to show up here. This is my new terminal. And this is my default profile. So I am running PowerShell Core. That's my preferred shell. And I have a maroon background, and I'm also using PowerLine here. So I can talk about this a little bit more, but I want to dive into the architecture of what's happening in the UI of the terminal. So first thing you might notice is tabs. So I do have a tab here of PowerShell Core. If I click the plus button, it'll open more of my default profile. So I can have as many tabs as I want and then just open them side by side. So if I wanted other profiles besides my default one, I'd have to go into the dropdown. So here is where all of my profiles are listed. So we'll walk through all of these and talk about why I have each one. But I do want to point out the command prompt and Windows PowerShell are still here. So the terminal isn't a new shell. It's more of a UI that's on top of all of your familiar shells. So you can still run command prompt and PowerShell inside of it, but then you can also run any Bash shell or uh, an Azure Cloud Shell connection as well. So we'll talk about all those in a little bit. So I'm going to talk about why I'm using PowerShell and uh, why I use Git in the terminal. So Git is useful for me because I write a lot of code for the terminal, and we are an open source project. So all of our code is hosted on GitHub. So if I wanted to see where I'm at with my code, maybe uh, commit a new piece of code to the terminal repo, I can do that here in my command prompt. So let me just open GitHub, uh, my folder rather, and then go into the Windows terminal directory from there. And then you'll see that I already have some stuff going on with my power line. So my path is here, and it's highlighted in blue. And then the branch that I'm on is highlighted in yellow. So that's telling me that I do have changes that are not committed yet. So if I ran git status, it shows that I have a modified file that I need to add and then commit and push to GitHub. So let's actually see what's going on in that file. So if I run code dot, this will open VS Code in the directory that I'm currently in. So I can show you that here. And my file was in the doc folder, and it's documentation.md. So I'll open that here and show you. This is my latest change. Clearly, very good documentation. So I need to commit this to the repo so everyone knows how to use the terminal. And I'll just do git add. And then this changes here, so you know that I've added it. This exclamation point turns into the tilde. So I'm going to commit my code, and I'll write hello from tabs versus spaces. And then when I do that, my power line will change from yellow to purple. So now I know that my branch is one commit ahead of the branch that's already in the repo. So to push my code up, I'll just write git push. And then this will change the colors of the power line back to the green, saying that everything's OK. My branch is up to date with the branch that's in the repo. So this is why I like to use power line. Uh, many people use PowerLine, and what's neat is that this is using the Cascadia Code PL font. So Cascadia Code is a new font that we came out with, and it does ship within the terminal. But if you want the PL PowerLine version of Cascadia Code, you can get that from GitHub. So from here, I'm going to go back into my dropdown and show you the rest of the uh, profiles that I have. So I already talked about Command Prompt and PowerShell, and then I have these three here. So these are actually Linux distributions. These are Linux profiles. So I have OhMyZSH, OpenSUSE, and Debian. So these are running on the Windows subsystem for Linux. So the Windows subsystem for Linux is a uh, subsystem in Windows that allows you to run all of your Linux distributions directly on Windows. And the latest version, WSL2, has a Linux kernel shipping directly in Windows. So with that, I can open any one of these. I want to actually open OhMyZSH. So OhMyZSH is not a Linux distro that's available in the Microsoft Store. So I had to install it using a Bash tutorial I found online. 
So it's really easy and it's the same process that you'd follow if you were on a Mac or Linux machine. So I can show you that this is ZSH by just typing the letter E and then it'll auto recommend the last thing I typed, which is echo shell. And then I can hit enter and show you that I'm running a ZSH bash prompt. So what's also neat about the terminal is that whenever you have a WSL distro installed on your machine, the terminal will automatically detect it and then add it as a profile into your dropdown. So you don't have to worry about finding the executable for it. You can just go in and have all your profiles there with all of your distros that you like. So let's talk about a user scenario that someone might have when using the terminal. So you might have three different environments that you need to have access to, such as development, test, and production. So let's go through and show how I have these set up in my terminal. So the first thing I want to do is open the development profile. So this one I've styled to have a green background, and I also have a little icon on the bottom right that shows that I'm in development. So green to me signifies that this is a safe place. I can write any code that I want, and it'll be fine. And then I'm also running an Ubuntu distribution. So that's because my entire workflow is in Linux, so I need to be able to do that on Windows. So I have Ubuntu running. So to show that this is Ubuntu, I can just run something like ls, and then you can see all of my files here. So this is my development environment. And for, if for any reason I need to go back to GitHub, I can go in my uh, default profile that has GitHub already. So if I did control shift and pipe, which is my custom key binding, I can open a new pane of my default profile right in the same tab. So you can have many panes uh, throughout, if you, like whatever you want, you can have as many as you like, and you can also split horizontally, um, and then you just close them by holding Control Shift and W. So if I needed to run any tests, I can do that here, um, but everything would be in my uh, Linux distribution. So this is how I like to do development. And then let's say I need to move all of my code to a test server. So I can open my dropdown again and go to test. So this is actually running PowerShell core. And you might notice that this looks completely different from my development environment. And that's to signify to me that I'm in a new environment and this is for testing purposes. So I have a yellow background as well as a little caution symbol on the bottom right. So I am in PowerShell, but I do need to SSH into a new server where all of my test code lies. So for the purposes of, of this demo, I'm just going to SSH into my local host. But if you have a server elsewhere, you can also do that in the terminal. So I'll just type SSH, and I am located at CINNAK at localhost. And then when I do that, I'll be able to SSH into another Ubuntu distribution, which is actually just my local one. But imagine this is a Linux distribution. Uh, somewhere elsewhere on a server. Now I can do all of my testing here. So I actually have PowerShell installed on Ubuntu to run some tests. So if I did pwsh, I'm back in PowerShell, but I'm still in Linux. And then I can run my test file, which is here, run test.ps1. And what's cool about this file is that it has emojis in it. So the terminal actually does support full Unicode full Unicode characters, so you can have things like emoji or characters that are not in the English language. So this is how I like to do my testing. And then the last thing I have is my production environment. So this one is the most unique environment because it is production. It's where all the code lives. So I have more of a red background, and it's also acrylic. So you can kind of see the little glow of the Windows icon back in my background. And then I also added a GIF as my background image to kind of signify that this is a special environment. So the background images do support uh, JPEGs, PNGs, as well as GIFs. So what's cool about this environment is that it's actually Azure Cloud Shell. So I'm now able to access all of my cloud files in Azure directly on my desktop. So here, if I just type 0, I'm able to log in to my Azure Cloud Shell account. And that's because my credentials are saved in the terminal, and then it'll store them for me, and I can just log in really easily, and I don't need to remember anything. So now I'm logged in, and to show you I'm really in Azure, I can type az, and it'll give me all of the things I can use with the az command. So this is my production environment, and now let's talk about how you can customize your terminal to get all the settings just the way you like. So I'm going to open my settings by going back into the dropdown and clicking Settings. And this will open the JSON file in my default JSON text editor that's set in Windows. So mine is set to VS Code. And then I'm just going to snap the terminal next to it so we can see all of our changes live. 
So let's just walk through and talk about these settings and show you how you can customize the terminal to get it looking like mine or however you like it. So the first thing I wanna do is demonstrate the live update. So let's actually change the requested theme from dark to light. And this will automatically update the terminal to have a light theme throughout, um, which actually matches my Windows light theme. So I do like using light theme. And then if we keep scrolling down, I'll show you these profiles. So these are actually JSON objects that are split out um, and they map directly to the dropdown here. So if I have PowerShell, here's my PowerShell object, then Command Prompt, and then Windows PowerShell, et cetera. So if I go into PowerShell, one thing to note was that power line that we used. So I was able to do that by having the font Cascadia Code PL. So you can use any power line font that you'd like, and then you set it here using font face. And then if we keep going down, the command prompt and Windows PowerShell were uniform to what they usually are. And then if I go all the way down to the development object, I have the background image set here. So it was those gears uh, or the wrench and screwdriver that I showed you. So that is set by using background image as well as background image stretch mode and background image alignment. So you might notice that as I'm mousing over this, there's some definitions that are coming up, and that is from the settings schema in GitHub. So the terminal will ship the settings file with a link to the schema, and that will give you autofill suggestions as well as definitions of each property. So if you ever need to know what something does, you can highlight over it, and it'll tell you exactly what it does. So if I keep scrolling down, I'll actually show you the other profiles that I didn't add. So since the terminal automatically detects all of your Windows subsystem for Linux distributions. If you have a lot on your machine, it can kind of load up your dropdown and you might not want all of them available at the moment. So you can hide them by using the hidden true property and then those will hide them from your, uh, your dropdown. And then if I keep going, this is where all of my color schemes are defined. So you might be thinking like, how do I find what colors to use? Something like that. If you highlight over the color, it will give you a color picker inside VS Code, and this is thanks to the schema. And then you can change the color directly in here, and you can make your color scheme that way. So that's how I made the production and the test and the development color schemes. And then if I keep going down all the way to the bottom, I have my key bindings. So when I open that pane, I use Control, Shift, and Pipe, and that is defined here. But if I wanted to add any more, and I'm not really sure which ones to do, I can start typing, and I'll do Command, and then hit Enter. And once I hit colon, the schema will come in and tell me any other commands that I haven't used already. And then it will also define them for me after I've entered them in. And if I were to save this the way it is, I should get an error, like failed to reload settings, since there is an error in my JSON. But if I hit OK, the terminal sh should still run just as well, it'll just use the default settings. So if I type AZ again, you'll see that things are still working just fine. So talking about the default settings, I do wanna show you what those look like. So if I save this so it's not broken, I can go back into my terminal, go to the dropdown. If I hold down the Alt key and then click Settings, it will open the defaults.json file. So this is all the properties that come shipped in the terminal, and these are not able to be edited. So if you want to make any changes, you can do that in your profiles.json file. But if you're curious about what the default key bindings are, for example, they're all listed here. So you can kind of poke through and see which ones you like, which ones you don't like, and then change those in your custom JSON file. And you might be wondering, why are we using a JSON file? Why isn't there a settings UI? We are planning a settings UI for V2 of the terminal, but for now we're just using JSON. But what's great about JSON is that you can share it between multiple devices. So if you get a new laptop and you don't want to reset up your terminal experience, you can just copy and paste your original JSON file, throw it onto your new laptop, and you should be good to go. And the same thing goes for enterprises. So if your enterprise wants everyone to have the same uniform experience, you can have that with the JSON file, have it customized just once and then distribute it between all machines and then you should be good to go. So let's actually talk about what it's like being open source and how you can contribute to the terminal. So the way that I like to get to our GitHub page is actually within the terminal. So if I go back in the dropdown and I hit feedback, the, uh, my default browser will open 
the GitHub terminal page, specifically on the issues page. So here, if you have any issues, if you find a bug, if you want to file an issue, you can do that here. If you have any features you'd like to see, you can make a feature request. And if you'd like to contribute and write some code, you can make a pull request here as well. Also, if you'd like to find any documentation of how to make new settings or use the terminal in fun new ways, we do have documentation on GitHub too. So version one of the terminal is scheduled to come out in the first half of 2020. And then after that, we're going to start developing right away on version two of the, of the terminal. So if you'd like to get the terminal today, you can get it on the Microsoft Store and start playing around. So personally, I do prefer to use tabs, but the terminal repo does use spaces. So whenever I write code for the terminal, I have to convert all of my tabs to spaces, which does kill me a little bit on the inside. But if you'd like to learn any more about the terminal, we do have a blog. It's at aka.ms slash CLI blog. Or if you'd like to check out our GitHub, file any issues or request any features, you can do that as well. So I just want to thank you for watching and feel free to subscribe to check out any of our future videos.